Baruch Hashem, we are old now, three days before Rosh Hashanah. Like everybody sees already Rosh Hashanah. You know, sometimes it takes time to move over with like a dream. It's coming, you know, we're not sure. But now, three days before Rosh Hashanah, we all know that Rosh Hashanah is coming. And you know, one of the things is that, uh, that uh, comes to our mind when we have uh, Rosh Hashanah coming up is, is, is the topic of this year is it's never, it's never too late. Because you know, a lot of times you come to the end of battle and you come, come, come to your mind, so I still have time to rectify, you know. I had a thought in my mind when I was start, when I started the year, this year is going to be a different year. I had many years that I had to spend, you know, this year is going to be a special year. I had plans for this year. But then, you know, somehow I missed it. During the year I missed whatever my, whatever my plans, my good plans were. And then that's it, and then I, I missed it somehow. And then, you know, coming close to Hashanah, Hashanah, I remember again, it's going to be Rosh Hashanah. So I'm trying to remember, to tell myself, it's time for me to start thinking about Rosh Hashanah. And it's known that the Rebbe, when he spoke about Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe said, immediately after Rosh Hashanah goes over, professes, and I put my ear into the world to see, to the hair, that they raking the wedding for the cross. So it's like, it's like the second Rosh Hashanah is over. You know, there's that, there are little different levels that the uh, first Alanta used to say that uh, when Pesach comes, it's really the time to start thinking about Rosh Hashanah. Definitely, it's, it's, it's Tammuz, the month of Tammuz, everybody knows it's Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the world. Manei Tshuva, Mimash Mishim, Kobayim. The time of Tshuva is already coming, it's already reaching us. But you know, some, sometimes we wake up in the mid beginning of the food strike by Rosh Hashanah, in the arrow, we say, oh my gosh, Rosh Hashanah is coming. But what do, we, what, what do we do when we find ourselves at the end of a load and we think, you know, is there any chance for us to rectify it now? So, first of all, we came both Hashem to the Rebbe Rosh Hashanah. First of all, the big, great thing that we have coming in Rosh Hashanah by the Rebbe is tremendous. I just want to say a small thing, you know, a famous story that happened in the, the last year of the Rebbe with Rosh Hashanah. It's a very famous story. That uh, Rebbein Durov, Rebbein was Durov in the uh, first of all the time the Rebbe was together there. So Rebbein was Durov in the city of the, the, of the, of the town first of And uh, Rebbein was one of the greatest Talmuds of the Rebbe. The Nosson was the most known Talmud, the Masoli. And Rebbein Durov was also one of the most famous Talmuds of the Rebbe. And uh, Rebbein of Durov came to the Rebbe's Rosh Hashanah, the last year of the Rebbe's Rosh Hashanah. And uh, last, last year, it was the last year that the Rebbe was already very sick. And he didn't, he didn't, he didn't talk about coming to him next year this morning. But that was his best Rosh Hashanah. And the Rebbe of came, he was one of the earliest Talmudim that came to the Rebbe's Rosh Hashanah. And he told the Rebbe out the problem. What's the problem? That the people of Bethlehem told him that was the day that the Rebbe left, moved, uh, moved from Bethlehem from, into Uman. Because the Rebbe's house was burned. And the, Re- and the Rebbe moved from Rester into Uman. So the, so the Rebbe was there in Uman, and the Baron of came from Rester to Uman, and he told me that the, the people of the city, the, the town, are saying that it's not fair. Not enough that we're not from Rester, and now also the, 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 the Baron the of the city is living there from Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't make sense that the world is not going to be there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the town for Rosh Hashanah, you know, you know. But the Rebbe says they are right, they have to go back. They said, do I have to go back? I changed the Rebbe. He said, no, you have to go back. They say, right? You have to go back. So, you know, the Rebbe said, you have to go back. The Rebbe tells him, but you cannot imagine yourself how much pain and how much I will be said that you have to do with Rosh Hashanah. So, the Rebbe the, 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 the used the opportunity and he said, okay, so, if that's the case, I will say it. Mm. So, the Rebbe said, no, you have to go. And again, you have no idea how much I'll, I'll, how much you're going to miss you, how much you're going to, I would say, uh, you're going to be, uh, like you, 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 like yeah, you're going to be like, for us, you know, that we need you. So, so he, again, he took the opportunity, he knows I'm going to say it. I guess he went back and forth a few times until the rabbit says, no, you have to go, and he left. Okay? And then, that year, I, it looks like they, everybody was there. That was shown to the of the rabbi. There were 600 people that were there that year. And then, and after it was shown, the rabbi said, it's painful. He said, Very famous story. 
Aral Emin is the bound of Rav, which was one of the greatest Talmudists. And Berale was a simple Jew. Berale, they say, he was busy with his swagging, which is also a mitzvah. He was busy and he wasn't there. So, he said, like, Aral Emin is and Berale Emin is so. Like, uh, right now, you see, Aral was one of the greatest Talmudists in the Bible. He said tremendous things about the bound, the bound of He said that the bound of came to sleep in Chasana. He had no sin. It's a tremendous madrigal, who could say about himself that uh, wow. he came without any sin to his, to, his, to his wedding, he was clean. He said we have to thank not only him, we have to thank even the horses that brought him to the woman. He said, hey, the Rebbe said, I used my good avot to bring the bound rope to be a rope and dress the bar out of the Rebbe. And so great was the bound rope. Yeah. And he said, Ara Nishtof and Bera Nishtof. So the Rebbe's Rosh Hashanah, which is so great, there's no difference if it's the bound rope or Bera very simple person. Mm-hmm. So if we had, even if we were Berale, if it was just a simple, you know, I said this year when people w- were debating, this year was a lot of the uh, questions. If it's to come, it's going to be possible to come, if we're going to be able to do it. If you're allowed to come, you know, if you're being a Muslim to come, it would be a really dangerous like the shooting and everything, we wouldn't be allowed to come. And it's very painful. Mm-hmm. But Bo Hashem, he worked out. I said, like in the middle of like, about a month and a half ago, when it wasn't clear yet, I said, everyone has to think as if the Rebbe, let's say if, if uh, Berale would come to the Rebbe and tell him, you know, I have to come to you, but I have a problem with the Svergim. And maybe the Rebbe too would tell him, you know, people need the Svergim and it's a mitzvah and you're not, you cannot uh, let people not be in the kind of mitzvah. No, you have to go. What would the Rebbe t- tell the Berale? You would tell him, you have no idea how painful I will be if you're not going to be Christos or Shoshana. Just like the Rebbe told the around the rope, the same idea. Because if the Rebbe said that Ahlein is and Berlein is told, that means that in the ideal concept of Rosh Hashanah, they all, we are all equal, so then no question, the Rebbe would say, Berlein, you know, you have to go, but you have no idea how painful I'll be if you're not going to deal with us Rosh Hashanah. Mm-hmm. So, take it that if you already came to Rosh Hashanah, how much is the Rebbe happy to see each one of us that came? It's just a tremendous season that every one of us that came, no question that the Rebbe is very happy that you came. Mm-hmm. No question how happy the Rebbe is. So, and the Rebbe said, he promised, he said, I could do tikkunim for each one, but it's tikkunim that even I could not do only in Erev Rosh Hashanah. The Rebbe said that I could do, the Rebbe said, promised that the entire year, everyone's going to come to him, he's going to try and do the best to help out the person. But there are tikkunim, some tikkunim, some people that whatever they did, whatever, whatever they messed up, that sometimes that there's no way how to rectify whatever they did. But Erev Rosh Hashanah, I could rectify and do Tikkunim rectification, even for things that, and for people that I could not do during the year, I could be mistaken and to rectify whatever people did, even whatever I could not do during the year, I could do it in Erev Rosh Hashanah. Mm-hmm. So great is being by the way, Rosh Hashanah, and Erev Rosh Hashanah special being by, meaning Rosh Hashanah supposed to mean that you have to do Rosh Hashanah. But the Erev Rosh Hashanah being from Rosh Hashanah and being Rosh Hashanah is a tremendous, tremendous opportunity that we got, for we, like we said, could we still rectify? Of course, we, we still have Erev Rosh Hashanah in front of us, so, mm-hmm. in front of us, so of course we can rectify Erev Rosh Hashanah, even if somebody didn't rectify until now, could still rectify Erev Rosh Hashanah. Another thing I want to ask you is, is a, is a uh, nice story. The Rebbe had a Talmud, which his name was Shmuel Isaac. He was also one of the great uh, Talmudians of the Rebbe. You know, it's known that there were seven Talmudians, which was called like the Menorah. The Menorah had the seven, and together with the middle Menorah, the Rebbe was like a Menorah, eight, eight, eight candles. Mm-hmm. Yes? Not candles, I'll just say the Menorah. The Yes, the Menorah. Anyway, so the eight. So the Rebbe had seven Talmudians, which was like the holiest Talmudian, known as the Menorah. So Shmuel Isaac was one of them. Not one of the story about the rock, the Shmuel Isaac, and the Beardle, and there's a few more, but so the Shmuel Isaac was one of these committees. The Shmuel Isaac is a boiler. His servant Hashem was extreme, was mysterious lavish. He was such a, he's a boiler, he's Davini, he's playing with, with such a power that he used to put in Davini, that when he used to after Davini, he had to change his clothes, because his wet work was his clothes was completely wet and sweat. And sometimes even in Russia they say that his clothes used to have a feeling for her. Yeah, fall it managed to fall apart because of the because of the effort that he put in the W. Wow. Shulaizik said 
One second. I would say Kriya Shema today. Like I said yesterday, then there's no sense for me living. You say every day, you say David, just think about how much purpose you used to put in David in, and then every day you used to, you used to, put, in, you used to put in more questions, more effort in David in. And he said, if I will David, if I will say Krishna today like I said yesterday, then there's no sense for me living. Yeah. I feel like there's no sense. If I didn't put in more effort today in Krishna, there's no sense for me living. Mm-hmm. So, so somebody told this this this, 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 this saying to have nothing. So he said, he, the Rebbe, I will say it's in Yiddish, you know, let's just say you repeat the, the, the word in English, in English, then, then we will translate it into English. And what the Rebbe gefeel, as the child push well. And what the Rebbe always gelernt, and he makes this to be in Kinder, and he makes this to be in God's name. Now in English, it's much like to say it's in the way it's in English. Uh, he, the Rebbe, guide and the sharp of the Cherev, or the knife, but it's called the Cherev, huh? Sword? Sword, sword, sword. Sword, like sword. Yeah, so him, the way we guide and the sharp of the sword. Us, the very tool that if we don't make tshuva Yom Kippur, you make tshuva in God's name. What is God's name? God's name is the day after Yom Kippur. Why is it called God's name? Rebbe says in the lesson 66 in the second half of the man, Rebbe explains like this. Because in the, in the, our name is connected with God's name. It says, Shmo Meshutaf Bishmeid Hashem. Is our is Hashem in Israel, our nation in Israel, our, the name of Hashem is connected and it's, it's together with our name. Now, when a person has a problem, it seems that his name, which is the life of the person, is the lack. It's a lack in the name of a person. Mm. So, when a person's name is, is a lack, it's, it's also Kibyogel, the name of Hashem, is in a lack. It's like a Kibyogel in Kibyogel, the name of Hashem. So when the, when the, when, the, when the young people today when Hashem, when Hashem forgives for our sins, then that's the time that Hashem forgives and, and the name of a person is becoming also again for the, when a person gets punished, his name is in a lot. So also the na- name of Hashem is also Kibyogel in a lot. So now when Hashem is forgiving everybody, then everybody there's no more punishment because Hashem forgives everybody. Then the name of the person is already uh, full, fulfilled. Uh, it's, it's full, there's no lack in the name. Then Hashem's name is also the same thing. So that's why Hashem, the day after you keep it, when Hashem forgives everybody, it's called God's name. That's because then Hashem's name is full. No, no lack in the name, Hashem's name. Mm-hmm. So, so nothing says like this. Rabbi Shmuel writes that Hashem is the Rebbe guiding on the sharp of the, the sword. But also the Rebbe, the Rebbe told us that if you don't make tshuva in your keeper, you make tshuva in the day after. In God's name. Meaning that it's never, it's never late. You know, everybody would say, if you don't make tshuva, stupid, you make tshuva, hell, you didn't make tshuva, Rosh Hashanah, I said to make tshuva, you keep up, no, it's never late to make tshuva. Now, this gives us a hope that the, the physical of nothing, that if you don't make tshuva, you keep up, make tshuva in, 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 in God's name, the day after you keep up, gives us that it's never late, because you always make tshuva. So, of course, when I'm standing now, in this time of the year, I still make tshuva. But the concept of making tshuva, has no, no doubt, no question that has to do with the idea of n- never give up. The Rebbe's most famous statement, the Rebbe said, never give up. That in the ancient years, for a long time, there's no years in the world. This is explain a little bit the idea of, uh, just in an in in example. You know, if somebody gives you a check of a million dollars, a lot of money, I don't think everybody, anybody, anybody uh, I wish everybody here would have money, but a million dollars is a lot of money. Somebody gives you a check of a million dollars. How much is this check worth it? You know, it depends how much the guy has money in the bank to cover the check. Because if he doesn't have the money, you know, say, if he has, if he has hundred thousand dollars, you go to the bank, they're not going to give you even the hundred thousand. Because if it says no, you're not going to give. It. You have to have a, money in the bank to cover the full million dollars that he has. So if the man said a nice statement, you know, there's a lot of nice statements. I've built this. Churchill has nice statements, there are a lot of, a lot of people have very nice statements. But the idea is that when the Rebbe said, why is this one of the most famous statements in the world that, that, uh, that people know it, that people repeat it. And another question is, you know, why is it that the Rebbe said there's no use in the world, in the world, in the world in the ancient years of God? You see, there are people that, that are giving us. So what's the, you know, you're saying there's no use of God, you see people are giving us. So what's the idea about it? That's the idea, idea is very simple. When the Rebbe says that there's no use for Yom means I have money in the bank to cover whatever I say. When I'm telling you there's no use for Yom means I have the bone. 
I have saying, I have lessons, I have prayers, I have teachings that to be the to be it can give strength for everyone, for each one, in no matter what it's going to go through in his life. I have enough chizuk and strength that I can give for each one, for each one, each person that's going to give him, that is going to give him whatever he's going through, that he can stand by and go through whatever, whatever this guy and difficulties he's going through. So when the Rebbe said, you know, the Rebbe didn't say this, this famous, if, if it's just a small idea, the Rebbe would say it when he was 20, when he was 30, the Rebbe was very wise, well, the second he was born. But the Rebbe said it in the last Shabbos Nachamon, when he was about to test, was shortly before the last Rosh Hashanah. Then when everybody came to him to the Rebbe, to the last Shabbos Nachamon, then is when the Rebbe said the famous thing, ancient news going on that. He says, after the Rebbe, when he teach, so many teachings, if he was already there as well, which the Rebbe not like that, that, that to, to different, before as well, and the different after as well, was like, Boya Shemaim Allah, like the difference between the, the, the heaven and the hell. So, mm-hmm. so, so far with this, before as well and after as well. And then when the Rebbe was reached so far, and as close as the Rebbe came to his spirit, to his dying, he reached, he reached higher and higher and higher at Vegas. And after all this, at Vegas, the Rebbe said, there's no Yish Baron Khan. So this is the highest level that Rebbe told us, there's no Yish Baron Khan. And this is what the Rebbe took to, to the strength, the chizmet that he gave us, that there's no Yish Baron Khan. And this is why we know it's never late to rectify whatever rectifies. Just to add to this idea, it's something very interesting. The Rebbe, uh, the, the Rebbe not convinced that there was once the Rebbe was sitting, the Rebbe was sitting uh, together with people, and then all of a sudden it looked like he's very worried, worried, sad, painful, you know, it's a natural how to translate, and how to translate the word sad. Sad. It says, well, you're showing the sad. Pain. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. Pain. I think that's the remember and probably the problem. Trouble. Huh? Trouble. Trouble. Pain. That's more or less the idea that the that, that, that was the sad. And so if nothing else, why is the Rebbe in pain? So, nothing, so the Rebbe said, how could I become a Jew? And he said that the Rebbe said it in a, in a way uh, different, as if he never tastes or tastes of Yiddish kind, as if like he never did any mitra. When he said, how could I become a Jew? Mm-hmm. And the master said, I, I don't understand. The, so the master said, the master said, the master said, the Rebbe, I don't understand. I, just now you, you, you told a lesson which nobody in the world ever teached. Uh, yeah. uh, taught no, yeah, yeah. a lesson like this. Nobody ever said such a nice, beautiful lesson, a deep lesson, as nobody ever revealed, revealed such secrets of the Torah. Hmm. How, how did it come that you say now, how could I become a Jew as if you never taste the taste of, of Yiddish guy? No. How did it come to you to ask that? So it wasn't like a joke. The, the very explaining word what he meant. Let me say like this. Let me say, would I, would I ever, the very new exactly who was. He said like this, would I ever think that I will be able ever in my life to reach the level I am now? I never thought that there's such a much such a level that I know now what I know about Hashem is both and, less, and the deep, deepness of the Torah and everything. I never thought that this is, there is such a much vega. So who knows what, what more much vega that could be in the world that whatever I did in Tuna is as if I never started, I never started to be this guy. This is a tremendous matter because a lot of times when people uh, have a, some kind of satisfaction that they're satisfied with whatever they were able to reach, so they're fine, okay, I already reached, I'm fine. I don't have to start in the, you know, in the, in the reach higher level. The Rebbe has to all want to reach, and he said a lesson that nobody ever will so this like this, uh, secrets like this in the third. He said, who, how can I become a Jew as if he never ever in his life as, 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 as a taste of Yiddish Christ, as if he never started. Mm-hmm. And this is a tremendous uh, matveik. Just to explain it in, a, in an example, I think it's a nice example to explain the idea. Okay? Uh, I live in Israel. You know, in, in Israel, it's, a, it's a very strong in startup of high tech. Start, it started that way yes, of yes. The coming up with an idea. Israel is very strong in Israel. There are very two companies in Israel that are very famous in the world. Everybody knows them, and people use them in, in the entire world. Which, when they happened, when they came out, it was a big deal in Israel. One of them is Waze. Everybody knows Waze. In the car, you put it in the car, you travel, you know where you go. I remember when Waze came came out with the application, it was like a big, you know, huge thing. Israel came out with something that could be used in the world. 
and then we Google buy it, we bought it, we bought it for 100 million dollars. Mm-hmm. It was a big thing in Israel, that you know, Israel had a, a, a big exit, you know, 100 million dollars is a lot of money, mm-hmm. and you know, Israel was very excited about it, they, about this exit. Okay, and then, 100 million dollars, like you look at it, a huge amount of money. He said, I'm just thinking everybody has one million, it costs now 100 million dollars, right? The people, the four people that did it together, four Israelis out of company, they could all have their set. They have houses for they, for the children, for the grandchildren, they could live the, the world without anything, any, any worried about money. Okay, but that was 100 million dollars, it's a nice amount. But a few years later, came out a company, Mobilize. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows it, right? Mm-hmm. The technical how to save the bike in the cars, you know. And, and so this was a huge exit. Mobilize. Mobilize, I don't know, maybe I'm saying it in, in, the way say in, in English, in, uh, in, in Israel. Mm-hmm. Mobilize, they, they, were, they were sold for 25 billion dollars. That was a huge exit that, you know, Israel uh-huh. was very good. Never before had such a, you know, such a big exit. 25 billion dollars. Israel didn't even know how to get excited about something <laughs> that they never did any point put in the mind. So now, let's think about this example and just to understand the concept. You know, hundred million dollars is a huge amount of money. But when you come and you tell this, uh, uh, say some, you tell somebody, you know, I'm, just, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not looking for more. But say, who knows, maybe I can come, when you have 25 billion dollars, what's the hundred million dollars considered according to the Twenty-five billion dollars. This is nothing. This is not even money compared to twenty-five. When the Rebbe, now let's go back to the initial. When the Rebbe said, as I think I never have had a taste of an English guy, I said, who knows what more can I do? I, 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 like I just found, I just, I was able to, if I would say I would start now, I would never think about another exit. But I came with another exit. I came with twenty-five billion dollars. Who knows? Just a, this is just an example, yes, of course, this is nothing compared to, to spiritual movement. But when the Rebbe says, now I came with 25 billion dollars, he says, now who knows what more level of Yiddish guy I could reach now that I didn't even know about it, that it's possible that I could just reach such a level. And then after the Rebbe reached the 25 billion, the Rebbe said again, as if I never, I, as if I never had a taste, because who knows what more I could, I could use and, and reach a level that I never had reached before. But that's a voice of Hashem, always to renew myself and never to give up. And I'm not going to look at two, it's a very interesting thing. As much, the Rebbe went higher and higher to reach a subject of Hashem. And, and, uh, and a voice of Hashem, he reached even more how much Hashem is co- has compassion and yet it's never late and it's never, you can never give up. Because as much the weather went higher, he was able to reach out, but the compassion of Hashem goes down, deeper and deeper, and how much the love of Hashem is for each one that is never, never to give up. And it's connected. I never was able to figure out the idea, but you can just understand that the concept. That as much you go higher, you reach the greatness of Hashem, that, uh, that Hashem has compassion for each one, and Hashem wants our servant in, to serve Him and to do whatever Hashem wants us to do, and it's never late to, to do whatever we, we could do, because there's no, no use by all that. Just, you know, uh, before, when you come to the sea, and it's something that, it's not, I'm saying it's not in my name, I'm saying, I'm saying it in the name of the Holy Father. Always, when he comes to the Shana, when he speaks, he says, you know, that's the time to, to change the you know, Shana. Change, you know, some people try and change uh, something big, and then it fell. It's not, it's not such a good idea. You come to him and he says, of course, we, we want to change. Take, a, take on yourself, take upon yourself. You go to the sea and, and you go and you say, I want to change in one thing I want to change. I want to take myself one time, some, for one guy being in a simpler, one guy being in a somebody wants to act, act better if it's not too big, if it's not too heavy, you know. And uh, some, some, someone is uh, not talking much now. Everyone knows the things that he wants to. So for one, it's key to be the idea of making a choice. Absolutely. 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 And uh, for somebody to be just to take, a, to take on himself to make a choice. Because a choice is just like a really that I will judge myself every day. And this is like really making tshuva. Because I'm going to make tshuva every day. I'm going to be close to you every, every day. Because one of the parts of a tshuva is that it's not only 
when I, when I have a real size, I'm just going to expand it a little bit like this. Um, you know that the Gnaz said that all who hold is still in Hamelach. Hamelach, you know, Hamelach Hashem is God. Hashem is the king. But mm-hmm. the incarnation? Incarnation is Hei Numa. Why? And, and, and that's what the Gnaz says. It, it, it is said why. Ah. But the, the cell of it, my father always said, because you see the crowd that are coming in Numa. Yes. So you understand that the, the, the crown nation is there because everybody, all kinds of people, all, all the minds of, of the world. But I, I, I thought once and I did, and I think it's true, because the Rebbe told us that so the concept of Elohim, the, the, the concept of the month of, El, of Tshuva in Elohim mostly, is to know that you always have to reach a higher level, uh-huh. always have to reach a higher level, and if you already reach the level, you should always try and go higher. And at the same time, you always have to know not to fall down from the lowest level. Even if you're on the lowest level, you still have to remember that you call to Hashem. The Rebbe brings the passage, es akshal, im es akshalayim, shamat. If I will go up in heaven, if I will, uh, I would say, mesa, if I will go up, if I will, mm-hmm. if I will go in the direction of up, uh, ascend. Ascend. Ascend, that's good. If I will ascend to go, to go up a higher level, Shamata, I still have a lot but to go further and, and reach higher and higher level. But that yes, if I go down, if I go down, if I go lower and lower, he never you what you 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 write your head down ne- yeah, the next to me. He never means you're always close to me. So the concept of of, of the chuba is meaning me is mostly that I always want to go higher and higher. But at the same time it, it, it's not as if I, if, I, if I fall down, that's it. You know, I really broke my relationship with you. Just like sometimes it happens in, in the house, that, you know, either it's good, if it's not good, then it's just, you know, it's over, game over. No. There's no crime, there's no way to break off the relationship with Hashem. Even if things, if, even if things go wrong, wrong, and even if I was the one to, to mess up, Hashem is always by us. And is, I, 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 is always with us. So it means I, ne- I never leave Hashem. That's really explanation, as I said, is the Akhtar, because when I am saying, Hashem, I'm always with you, I want to start a new year, and I, and I, I promise I will try to do my best. But even if things are going to go wrong in my life, and I'm not going to be successful, yes, I'm always going to be with you, I'm always going to stick, stick, to, stick to you, I'm, and, and like, because you are so always with me. So I'm going to stick, and I know, even if things go wrong in my life, and even if I'm, if, even if I'm messed up, I'm not going to give up. I will try again and again, and I will stay, and I will try to do the best, whatever I can still do. And that's really achta, uh, uh, like you said, the Bible says, explanation. Uh, because this is really the truth, explanation. When I say, Hashem, you, you, you're my king, and I'm always going to do. Even if I fell, you're still my king. And I still do whatever, whatever, whatever you're telling me to do. That's really the achta. That's the way to say it. When do we say it? Huh? Okay, we say Amela, Amela, Nishma, you know. Then, then, but, but it's, it's, it, but, but it's the concept, it's the concept. You say then, but to all I of Rosh is you always say, you know, the symbol is you always train on the, on the, on the, uh, on the king, kingdom, kingdom of Hashem. That's really the whole purpose of Rosh Hashanah. To make Hashem the king, Amela, I'll call it all, and that's the time in Rosh Hashanah. Because that's the time when we take on, on ourselves again to connect Hashem, to realize Hashem, and, 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 and to, to continue. Just as a quote, you know, when I said to Rabbi Khanan, it's always saying, you go to the tin. So you go to the tin, and, and you take on yourself one thing to rectify. Just to close with a story that happened just a month ago. I used the story from Rabbi Rosenblum. It's a, it's a maggot. He says, I'm partial to what was given to him. He said a story that just happened uh, about a month ago. It was in time of vacation with Asmani. There was a guy that was in Kabbalah and seen and he saw Guys from Bekar, you know, in the Kirish line, the Kabbalah himself to be in this Chazik in al that says in Shukhanov, before Davini, you should wash your hands. He comes in the Kassel, like, uh-huh. mm-hmm. to pay yourself before Davini, and wash, you wash your hands before, before, before you, before you Davin. So, you know, people, people sometimes go to the, go to the thing, they take like, she shrapped the border, and then they pass their it's a joke that somebody has, uh, somebody, could you give me a little bit of your water that you wash? I also need a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's a joke it's that to say, you know, you really have to wash your hands, it's like washing cup, you know, like it's supposed to be. Okay, so this guy was in Kabbalah himself, 
he says in the be very careful, and before that in his canonical you know, business. Okay, he tried every all the years, entire year, he was able to do it. But then came uh, the Nazmani, you know, the time he got to vacation, he got to the mountains, he got So he went out to vacation, his wife and the children uh, went, went to the beach, and he went, uh, he went out there uh, jogging. He was, uh, he was in Nedu Yarkon, the river Yarkon in, uh, in Israel. And then he sees that the sun is about to set, it's, it's, it's time for Mizra. So he's looking for a place to grab Mizra. You know, a lot of people, all the places there in Dabi uh, Mizra. So he wants to grab Mizra. The Dominion is going to start out in Mizra. So he wants to start out in Mizra. And then he, he remembers that he has uh, something that he decided he did say he's going to try and rush his hand before Dabi and immediately the so is coming to him and telling him, you know, this is only when you're sure, not now. And when you know, when you know jogging and it's a vacation, that's not the time. He said, no, no, I decided I'm going to try and do it. This is I was Mukawa and myself, Rosh Hashanah. I will stick it, I will do it. So he went, he find, he find a paper, a uh, cup, a uh, cup, I mean, I just uh, say, you know, you have to find a cup. Huh? Okay, he found this and he now, now raised, raised the water. So he went to the Yarkon and he was about to take out water and wash it then. All of a sudden he sees a, a hand in the water. He says, oh my gosh, you know, it's probably a, a, a doll, you know, it's not, it's not real. And he sees a hand, he says, he grabbed that, he was a, this guy was from a fellow. So, Mamish was He grabbed that, he, was a, uh, uh, he jumped into the water, he took out, it was, was a, 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 a goal of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a kid of 10 years old. And immediately he gave a push you know, to the stomach to say, uh, all the water went out, <laughs> she started to breathe. Mom, she saved he saved her life. That was one cover that he did saved the life of a of a child. If not because some somebody another daughter in the Benazan, so many people died in thinking by the water. And he saved and he saved the uh, he saved the life. This is one cover, he recovered on himself, one thing to change. Look how powerful that is. He saved the life of uh, of uh, of uh, So, Mr. Shem, I went before to the end and I said I did something that I want to change because it's never late. Now we can still let the fire, and I hope, Mr. Shem, that everyone we, we should believe that we could change even in the last minute. And if has to show within the children, we can still do in God's name in the day after we keep up. But it's supposed now by, while by, by, by the, we are by the Rebbe, we could go to the end and we could. Uh, Connected to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe promised that the Elvish Shana is doing with the vacations that even he could not do with the end of the year. We should all deserve her to start new, to renew ourselves, and start refresh and start a new year. We should all deserve her to a very good year, sweet year, to us and to all time. Amen. Amen. Shkayak, shkayak, Just a second, somebody knows how to close it. Uh, huh? Uh, the Rebbe said that those who come to the Kibbutz, he gets their dinner in, even at night time, and first time, he gets their dinner in.